We're going to move over to our next map. It's going to be on Aklon Waste. We already saw some cheekiness coming out from Apocalypse before. Let's see if we can do it again. All right, spawning in the top left-hand corner, the red Zerg, the incredible miracle. It is Biol. <laughs> and over in the bottom right-hand side, the IVD player, it is Apocalypse. All right, and just to update you guys with what's going to happen after this, the next two matches, we're going to get Puck versus Huck. That's going to be a cool matchup, PvP series. Of course, Puck and Huck, I mean, they rhyme. Uh, and then after that, we will get the gym. We will get the gym, yes. <laughs> the gym versus the loser of this series. So going to be some exciting matches afterwards. Really looking forward to that. Openings, Apocalypse just... Going to put down his barracks, and I love this drone scout coming out from Buell. Just playing completely comprehensive in his defense, in his early stages, saying, I will not die to anything silly. This is something we've seen throughout all of his games. And we see that Apocalypse is going for the quick barracks and gas opening. Pretty standard these days. And... He yeah. didn't actually scout that, but I mean, seeing the barracks, he can kind of yeah. assume what it is. So. It's a very rare that we see just a naked, oh well, just a barracks, marines, and then a command center. That's like a Wings of Liberty yeah. S build. And I mean, he's just assuming it's the gas bone because of his overlord scouting yes. pattern. Yes. If it was just a naked barracks, he'd be able to get that kill using a marine. But it's not, so he will be okay. Now, like this, uh, what this drone is trying to accomplish is whether this is a CC first, you could play a little greedy, maybe even a hatchery block. You could see if there's, well, exactly what it is right now, or if it's like an 888, like a proxy barracks type of build. And all those things are really important to just know, because as a Zerg, you need to be able to make the right amount of drones in the beginning phases, uh, save up larva sometimes to get Zerglings, get the right amount of queens, spine crawlers, etc. That's why he's just playing very defensive uh, with this drone scout at the cost of, I would say, a good 50, 60, 70 minerals that he's losing out, not mining with a single drone. But the Overlord gets in here and sees, okay, it's a command center. This is the build that you did last time. He does command center and then a supply depot. And after that, we've seen him go factory. Now, is there going to be a second refinery? In the game that he all in suppy, there was a second refinery very fast. Mm -hmm. And of course, Again, I'll, we'll talk about it. It was to get a fast Banshee, or a fast couple of Banshees. You get a lot of Hellions, and you just pull your SCVs with some Marines, with some Marauders, and you just push. And because of the Hellions just being constantly repaired, you don't die. <laughs> you just straight up don't die. Any amount of Zerglings just get absolutely crushed. And look at this! Bonus damage! <laughs> One Zergling, so much bonus damage. But look at all that other HP loss. Wow. Oh, look at this bonus damage. Oh. Well, it's it's damage. I didn't say kills. Uh, two Zerglings going across the map. This is what I was talking about before. Because Apocalypse only gets a single Reaper, normally you get two Reapers. Did, did, you, you, uh, did you know the healing ability is called Combat Drugs? Yeah. I didn't know that was the name. Command center is going down as well. And what? That's a bold SCV. <laughs> Supply bid yeah. that just pops up. <laughs> it's like no big deal, guys. Uh, he's gonna go and and repair and and build that command center to unsupply cap himself because that's normally where Terran doesn't make it a depot because they know that command center is popping up. So unfortunate circumstance right there. A third command center, though, this isn't going to be some sort of cheeky play coming out from Apocalypse, no second refinery either. On the other side, we just have mass droning. Metabolic Boost is on the way, playing it so that he has Zerglings out in the field, and he's going to take his third base once again. Hmm. He is making a quick Roach Warren, though. And so far, I don't think we've seen him use defensive Roaches. So I'm no, curious if he'll be using this to be aggressive, or if he's just making it to do a different defensive style that we haven't seen him use yet. Well, it does feel like it's for aggression. Yeah, because right. even though you take the third, usually you take a third when you're aggressive these days as Zerg. 
Yeah, because just of, to fake uh, it out. Yeah, but Terrence is two base thing. They're like, okay, Expected. well. They're like, okay, it's two base mutas, or it's some kind of two base cheese. And both are bad. Yeah. Zergoons will poke in there. He's definitely using it for aggression. Yes, he has, I mean, you can see all the overlords. Four overlords. And He's we're gonna, gonna see a ton of roaches being popped out. Five! That's a ton! So many roaches. So many roaches. He's just gonna keep making them though until he gets to yes. about 10, maybe 12, maybe even a bit more. Probably a stop at 12 though, and then just flood the speed things behind it. And the maybe problem is, this too. Apocalypse has been so slow to, um, so slow to to actually push out onto the field and see this coming. So he's gonna he's gonna see all the roaches about I oh, would say a good 20 seconds too late. I mean this should really have been scattered a lot earlier. Well, even more than that it looks like. And you are the roach expert. I mean, how? what is the right way to defend this if you're Apocalypse? Well, it depends partially on his micro and how the banlings are used, but I think usually you want extra bunkers. You won't yeah. have any up. I don't... He might have no, them up. No, it, it takes heads. 40 seconds. I mean... But how long... Banelings have to morph too. That's and true. the links aren't close enough to morph into banelings. So maybe these bunkers will finish. And if they do, maybe he has a chance. It's all about how well he fills the bunkers, because you don't want to fill them all up with four marines and then let the bunker blow up and the marines die immediately. So if he micros this perfectly, I think he has a chance. Well, because 14 banelings. I think those bunkers will finish, just barely. Wow, so I think if incredible. he has perfect control... Oh, oh, oh no, he thinks this is a fake. And oh. this is going to be a big surprise. Oh man, he's just always let them finish because it's it's just a salvage. It's the same thing. Uh, Banelink's gonna crash through, but surprisingly, this is actually not that bad for Apocalypse. Wow, how Maybe. is he able to do There's that? There's still a lot of links in there. There, around. there is. And now Banelink's crashing through, killing the SEVs. Oh no, the bunker's gonna go down, and that is Apocalypse's lifeline. Stim is finished, and he has some units on the high ground. Uh, he's definitely not out of it yet. He has three orbitals. Yeah. I think he might even be slightly ahead after defending this, even with salvaging the bunkers. So this yeah, was just he a has, nice defense. He has the mobility advantage, right? Like, he has the medevacs out. He can still poke and prod. Baneling, goodbye. And now, all of a sudden, Apocalypse in a good position. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. I like his position a lot better. His upgrades. Uh, he's getting plus well. one. He can yeah. start the other plus one as soon as he wants to. He already has medevacs. He has stim. I like his position a lot. I do too. I mean, it's not. Don't don't look at the the raw numbers right now. Income tab thirty one to forty nine. Look at the fact that it's so easy for Apocalypse to do damage, and he's almost guaranteed to do damage, or at least force out a lot of defense. And from that, with three orbital command centers, he comes back so fast into this. Mm -hmm. That's what it really comes down to. Uh, but still, he is supply block. There's a lot of things that are that are working yeah. against him, and this is an alarming amount of units that are ready to defend. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I'm not even sure if he has that much of a lead, but I still like the position he's in because his tech is pretty well developed. And he also has the third orbital, which is what he needs. And the middle are going to be very late this game. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so is 1-1. One, one. You can see 1-1 uh, one, one in relative to the Zerg's 1-1. One, one. So there will be that upgrade advantage. And you'll see, I mean, the Terran will be able to climb back even though 37 harvesters to 59. You can see the mule power. Uh, you can just add on 13.5 to this number, and that's the real difference between the two. Uh, and we've seen Apocalypse sh showcase some really good micro. Again, killing a couple of Zerklings, just lifting up, and look at this. There's an attack over in the top. Oh, a single Baneling will be detonated. And uh, just good pressure overall from Apocalypse, I have to say. I mean, it's not going to do killing blows, but it's definitely enough to just... You know, get him a little bit more back into the game. Now dropping into the yeah, third base. Yeah, he's not losing any units in this, so yeah. it's pretty good. It just good micro. Net profit from here. The queen now under attack. Can he actually kill the queen? That'll be a nice pickup. But no, he will not be able to. In the meantime, there's that. Whoa! And, and just continuous good trades by Apocalypse. Now he needs to get out. Okay. Nope. Nope. That doesn't help. But overall, he's played... Uh, a pretty good way to come back into this game. 1-1 one, one is now finished. 2-2 two, two can be started pretty soon here. And this is normally a situation... Well, normally, 
Zergs are the ones that have the upgrade advantage. Very slightly, but they will have that upgrade advantage. So for him to have the upgrade advantage in this game, uh, just showcase much more cost-efficient trades as we go on, as we move forward. Supply difference not that different, although Terran should be technically a little bit more ahead this yeah. at this time. That's definitely not the best for him. I think it's just uh, after that pressure, the old drone up pretty fast. So it kind of helped him get back in it. And maybe Apocalypse lost a bit too many SCVs? I'm not sure. We'll see. 2-2 uh, has been initiated. Only plus two weapons has been initiated for Apocalypse. Now going in. Ooh, I like this. Very fast burrowed banelings. And this is to the punish the already hemorrhaged economy of Apocalypse. He doesn't really have the ability to constantly scan. And let's be honest, Terrans these days aren't scanning every place when they pop out. They're only scanning the front lines of the creep tumors. So if these banelings uh, aren't scanned, obviously they're going to net a lot of kills. Mm -hmm. And good defense by Bjorn. He has units in every position, so these medevac drops won't do much damage. And it's a small count, but it's enough. Uh, he's trading just the Banelings, so he can uh, play that nicely. And the question is, when does Apocalypse actually choose to go out? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Oh! That was gorgeous. Even as a Terran player, that was gorgeous. Uh, and from that, I mean, that's a whole production cycle that he just lost there. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, more drops coming in to the natural base this time, but there's a Muta to actually meet this one Metamac. Can he kill it? Oh, he kills the Muta instead. It's a nice job, but it also kills uh, the Metamac. Two Mutas will go down in a single Queen. It's a worthwhile drop, but he needs to be careful. Again, he, he's, he's wary now. Now he's going to bait out the scan, and there's nothing there. Just a couple of mind games being played by Beal. I love it. But he's still very widow mine empty, I would say, in this composition. Yeah, he is slowly starting to add them, but it's not as much as he would want. He does have a second factory now, which will help him get the upgrade and turn out some more mines as well. So we'll have to see plus how two, well it works. Plus two, plus two, about to finish for the Zerg over here. And is this ever a position where Apocalypse is okay? Like, can he come back into this? Hmm. I think he can come back, but it's going to be difficult. He's behind right now. Yeah. Just the the drops didn't do enough, and it's unfortunate. Um, I mean, I know we wanted to see like uh, to to see Apocalypse be okay from that attack, but yeah, it, think, it looks like it was too much. I think maybe immediately after taking that damage, he should have just taken his third base as soon as he cleaned up the attack and started mining from it immediately, and then maybe. He could have tried to get back and do it that way instead of going for the medevac drops and just trying to set his Or even do it while the medevac drops are going on, right? Yeah. Uh, but now, like, he's he's investing so much in just denying this creep, and that is correct. I mean, you can still play to deny the fifth base mm -hmm. in DVT. That's perfectly reasonable, especially how long uh, we've been seeing the mid-game stage, actually. Um, just the fact that it started it's such a late phase, but here it is. And Bjol yes, taking a pretty questionable fight here. The Banelings are not going to connect on anything. Look at how much Marine, look at how much bio is left from that engagement. A great yeah. split from Apocalypse. I'm not sure why Bjol did that. He was just so overconfident in how good his army was. And off creep, it's not that good of an army no. unless you can get those Baneling connections. I mean, it's, it's, it's very difficult to get those Baneling connections, I know. Um... You know, if you've seen uh, even innovation, micro all of his marines against banelings, I mean, it's it's still not going to work out that well. And Apocalypse showcasing why he is one of the best Terrans in WCS America. Bjol just lost too much from that. I think he's dead. <laughs> Honestly, he's losing his base. And another round of units, Zerglings and banelings, will be cleaned up pretty easily, pretty seamlessly, losing drones now over here at the fourth base. Remember, his natural is mining up pretty soon. His main base is just about mined up. Bjol will be able to take out the Orbital Command Center, but how is he going to deal with the army that's right in front of his door? Yeah, and there's already another Command Center done for Apocalypse, too. He bought a fourth base, which he can lift and retake his third as soon as he's stabilized. And Bjol, he's in a tough spot. He has a lot of Ling Banning, 
But if Apocalypse just pulls back now, I think I think it should work out pretty well for him. I think so. Well, he's going to keep going in and, and just keep drilling. Well, I mean, with his micro so far, that could definitely work too. Yep. And again, pretty decent trade so far. I mean, he has the advantage right now in in, uh, in a lot. Just one battle can swing it so hard, Ghost User. It definitely can. That was just such a good fight for Apocalypse. I never imagined he could take a fight that well. Yeah, uh, but, you know, it, it's Buell's overconfidence in that last fight. And it's he's not a, out of the woodwork right now. I mean, he still needs to get back as best as possible because there is an impending army that's gunning for all of this. Uh, oh, the Banelings crash on the Thors! That's the wrong unit to crash on. Uh, but still, he's able to retain a lot of his medevacs. Everything's not so bad, but this marine count is pretty flimsy so far. And again, Banelang's going to crash on top of the Thor, but there's not enough marines just yet to fend off against this many mutas. He needs to back up. And uh, things will stabilize. We have like a low economy versus low economy. And I've said this multiple times. When we have this situation, 30 mutas will be the more cost-efficient army. Mm hmm and I, I do think you're right. If Apocalypse just backed up from there... Yeah, I think he just needed to pull back he sooner and fine. stabilize, and he would have been in an okay spot. But he, all of his units got caught on the way home, and Bjorn just capitalized on that. Upgrades 3-2 for the ground of, uh, of Terran against the, I believe, 3-3 three, three ground of Zerg. No, just 2-2. Two, two. So that even shows you a little bit why the trades went the way they do. Now targeting inside the main base, but Marines and Mines will be here to defend. And there's just so many mutas. Like yeah, they're just taking on all the Marines. The Marines have to run away from them instead of the other way around. <laughs> yeah, 28 mutas in this count. 26, excuse me. And they're just going to keep wrecking the base of Apocalypse. And they can get out, they can choose to get out at any time they want or even wrap around into the third base, and they're fine. Turret's gonna be placed down, and Apocalypse just trying to get the army count that he needs to, but it looks like he will never approach that. There is a drop going down at the third base, though, and this is gonna get shut down pretty easily. There's just too many Zerglings. Man, Apocalypse, I mean, his, his main's getting torn apart, and this gets from bad to worse, the medevac being taken out, and again, Apocalypse in a situation where he has no starport. Mm -hmm. And he has no way to heal his, his marines. Man, Bjorn's doing such a good job. He is. I kind of question the decision to go Thors. They're very costly and they're usually not too efficient. It, I guess they didn't work out too badly because the Baneling smashed into them. But a lot of the time it's not the Well, he did do this in the round choice. of 32 in his defense. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, I mean, he's here in the round 16. He was able to be successful with them. Yeah. Uh, we be saw him beat, I believe, Moonglade with it. I think it's just because he didn't have the mine count he wanted with his yeah. army with the Thors. Uh, but here the engagement comes in. There's just too much overwhelming forces for the Zerg player. He's pulling back all the way, able to overrun his opponent, though. And there's just so many Mutas now taking out the Orbital Command Center. And there are still persists a lot of Banelings that are moving up into position. No good Thor hits are going to be able to save the day. And ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have a winner, Buell, in excellent prime position to take this 2-0. As he just swarms in with additional units, Zerglings now going to engage against the front lines. But gets shut down. Another Orbital Command Center going to be taken out here. And it's because he can. GG.